Uh, today is uh, Sunday, November 21st, and this is the Western Desiderata Extinction Audi meeting. And uh, I guess Sophie can start with uh, the reaction of uh, how you feel about the Eastern meeting. I don't know how I feel. Um, I, am, I managed to listen to it thanks to you because you sent it to me. And I listened to it during a quite nice morning and then things started to change <laughs> gradually as, as I was listening to Gary and, and <laughs> Lord Hugh. And I started to, yeah, um, it's going to take me a long time to to process all this. Uh, yeah, it's, I I don't want to divulge what, what uh, Lord Hugh has to say, but um, I, I'm feeling very, not upset, but frightened. And at the same time, uh, eager and at the same time, curious and open. And, and but uh, I'm already very aware of, of the sky and the sea around me but after listening to that i just as i was saying earlier i i already get sort of not hallucinations but things like that visions and stuff i think now it's going to double up <laughs> after what i've heard um so <laughs> um there's a lot of aspects of what was discussed i'd like to i'd like if lord you would summarize a bit and also uh, you invited us this morning to go to explore other avenues like the sigil and a manifesto and also um, Gary uh, um, approached the subject of the people who who will not survive or who think that they're in a bad place for any type of survival and the hospice aspect of of our group um, and these these are all sorts of other things like that anyway so that was my I won't say more Yeah. Okay. So Tom, Tom was asking. Tom didn't see the the one this morning. So Tom, it's really what I was talking to you on Wednesday about. Really. Um, yeah. My thinking is that you know we we're not uh, going anywhere. <laughs> so everybody we talk to, it it doesn't really work. I mean, like Alison didn't like us. She said we're not a good fit because uh, she thought we're Extinction Rebellion. And Spencer didn't like us, I think, because of the anti-vax stuff. He didn't really understand that. I think he thought we were kind of trumpets or something. Um, and, uh, you know, Darren, I think, <laughs> pissed off. <laughs> he had a big ego. Um, but, uh, you know, and then and then Faulty's sort of completely off to lunch. I mean, I don't think he's in touch with reality. But... Um, yeah, I mean, uh, what I've been, I think it's just time to put cards on the table. As I'm trying to be subtle uh, all along and try to let people know that <laughs> there's some really bad shit coming along and try to tell people, you know, obliquely about the flipping. You see, my idea was you start an alternate reality game, which is really just a, a cult or a sect, for in, in, in other words. Um, and then you gradually introduce it uh, to people about the flipping, you know, and <laughs> in that environment because it's, all, it's virtually impossible to tell people about the flipping because it's just easier for them to write you off as a crank it's all it, it's just very difficult information to <laughs> to impart to people I, I i mean for personally um my family doesn't know about the flipping nobody's read my book no one in my family has read my book my, i tell my kids you know live your best life <laughs> things are going to be short but I haven't really shared with the reason why. Um, and, yeah, it's it's difficult once you actually know what's what's coming. Uh, of course, the big caveat is I could always be wrong. So, you, you know, you ought to make, in fact, yeah, I mean, this is one of the things we should do is just go over in detail, make, <laughs> make sure that, um, you know, I haven't got uh, my wires crossed. Um, but the... Um, yeah, um, the, it's very difficult, and especially in terms of family. So I have cards on the table now. I absolutely intend to survive this, um, and I would like to see as many people survive as possible. And it doesn't really matter who. It, to me, it's more important that somebody survives rather than, than no one. 
it's a terrible prospect to go extinct. I don't believe there are any aliens out there. I believe that this is it. it, it as strange as it seems, in billions and billions of stars and billions and billions of galaxies, it is empty. It is just strange as hell. But yeah, this planet, the miracle of DNA and and what it does is is a lot a lot more incredible than people think. It, our existence is much more of a fluke, I think, than, than people know. And it, it's just an incalculable tragedy to see, you know, humans with all our sentience just snuff out. It's, it's very possible we wouldn't come back. So, I mean, no sentient being would exist again in this eon. That's the age of the universe. So that, that depresses me. I, I, I like the idea of humans going on. Uh, I don't believe that you can go on as immortals. You have to die and <laughs> pass the baton on. Um, and we have no future in space. Space is dead. It's empty. It's an incredibly hostile environment. It resembles, it's worse than the inside of a nuclear reactor. No, it's, it's an insanity to try and go into space. I mean, because you, you wouldn't... I mean, nobody looks at the inside of a nuclear reactor in like Chernobyl and says, ooh, I want to be in there. That's where my future is. It's like, you're mad. You're madder than Joe Mad fuck. So it's like, you know, all these imbeciles like, you know, Elam Stark, or, you know, Jeff Bezos or Richard Branson, they're mad. They're just fucking nuts. They just don't know what the fuck they're doing. They're on this childish kick. Um, that's you know only suitable for twelve year olds, but it's very captivating for you know people brought up on Star Trek and bullshit. So um, yeah, um, I think <laughs> uh, people should be told uh, exactly what's coming, and they should try to survive it. I don't care who survives. I don't care if the billionaires survive. For all I say, even if the people that survived were complete psychopaths. I mean, I preferred not to be the billionaires because they're such sociopaths and psychopaths. But, you know, rather them than no one, I mean, they could always have kids that were better than them. I mean, the the thing about uh, the flipping, Gary was talking about is, is it metaphorical? It's both. It's metaphorical and literal. I don't believe anybody comes through the flipping, <laughs> um, you know, a psychopath. <laughs> no one uh, on the other side so it, it's kind of a big filter. You just anybody with a sociopathic mindset isn't going to make it, in my view. You just you know anybody with a prepping mindset, anybody with an individualist mindset, you know the Peter Thiel's of this world, and, and um, the Elon Musk, they, they're done for. You know, so you know just the, just the way they think and the way they try and survive is is crap. But I mean, if you want people to survive. Um, I think there are two things, and this is what I want to explore next. Um, and now, what I plan to do is, uh, if you guys agree, is I was, uh, we'd write a, a manifesto, an Extinction Audi manifesto, where we put down all our ideas on all the subjects we normally talk about and debate them out and see what we want to do. But, I mean, from my point of view is, A, I would like to survive personally. I'd like my family to survive the flipping. Um, and barring that, anyone, anyone is good. Piraha, billionaires are kind of the bottom of my list. Um, but, you know, uh, if, if just animals survive or bacteria, it, you know, it might, there might not be enough time left in this universe. This is a bit like what Lovelock was saying is, you know, we might have come to the old age, the sentience of life on this planet. Um, but, you know, I I think uh, that if you embrace the idea that we should survive, I mean, I was I was horrified. I got to tell you, this year I I was sailing around um, in a flotilla with uh, a well-known famous anarchist <laughs> who I won't name, and he mortified me because he said, you know, we talked doom a subject, and he said, um, you know, don't you think it's just better? all the damage that humans have done to this planet, that we just go extinct and just give it over to the animals. And I was so appalled because that's the manifesto of the Columbine shooters. If you look at their manifesto, that's what they said. They said nothing matters anymore. Humans are just evil. Just give it, give the planet back to the animals. 
and then they went on a shooting rabbit. And I thought, that is so anti anarchist This is a famous anarchist <laughs> and underneath. It's just so nihilistic. I just horrified. I just said, no, that, that just can't be. You just can't do that. <laughs> you can't go there. It's inhuman. So first of all, we're team human. All these people are in, in you know, inhuman. And the reason they're inhuman is they've fallen under the spell of the alien quarter. They all become transhumanists and, in effect, death romances. They don't like chaos. They don't like life. And they deserve to die. They, they literally will die in that kind of nihilism because they want completion. And you say, if you want completion, you'll get it. Completion is death. So I'm not in the completion group. I'm in the Sherazade group. I'm in the team human group. I love life, embrace life. I want it to continue in any form, especially sentience life. It doesn't, life doesn't mean a lot if it doesn't know it's living. But I mean, even the fishes, I think, are extremely emotional and you know, full of qualia and their whole life is, is feelings and stuff. And fuck it, I mean, I'd be happy if the fish carried on. <laughs> but but um, better still, you know, all the potential that humans have and stuff that, Man, whoever comes through this is going to be fucking enlightened <laughs> anyway. You like. Um, so you know, that's my my so it's a very personal take on it, and I hope you feel the same way. I hope you don't feel, I mean, I don't think it's right, I don't think it's human to give up and say, you know, our, our species has sort of a couple of earth flips at least, and. We are capable of it. Um, it. After a very, very hard time, maybe thousands of years, unfortunately, um, the small number of survivors will be in a kind of an Eden, I think. Um, and to maximize that, the, my logic is the sooner the flipping happens, the better. So, you know, this culture is going to die. It's, it's just naturally going to die in a Malthusian catastrophe any way you look at it. The, the Club of Rome figured that out, that it would be 2020. And they've been planning what to do in 2020. Believe you me, the pandemic broke out in 2020. I didn't think it was very surprising. It was so, they were going to pull something out of their hat. I mean, I'm, I don't have any proof that of, 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 of it being some big plan, but like man alive, it fits. So, um, yeah, I... There are various factions uh, that know about the flipping. They're, they're almost certainly the guys that pull, you know, the power brokers that pull the levers, I believe that they are working from that script. So, um, the and and they've modeled it on stuff like that. So, it's I don't think it's really possible to time it very well. It's one of the reasons why I don't tell my family and kids about it because, you know, I ass I'm running on a couple of assumptions about surviving, and I assume you, as as you get close, you will, if you know what's coming, you will see warning signs, right? And you, you, uh, you see, it's not something you can run around telling people, saying, "Oh, yeah, <laughs> I've just had this epiphany that you know, Hugh just told me about the flipping," and yeah, we must prepare. You know, basically, they'll lock you up if you if you do that. You'll alienate everybody. You'll be known as a kook, and. Um, you know, it's not a very good survival strategy. You know, for example, for me, if I told my kids and said, like, oh, you you know, I think the best place to be is in Greece <laughs> to survive it on a boat. And they came, you know, I said, get on a plane, you got to be here. It's like, you know, it might be five years, it might be 10 years, and they're living on a boat. They're, very soon, they'd get sick of it and say, like, you know, you, you know, the flipping's never coming, and we're chewing up our youth, you've wasted our lives. So, my kids personally are in some of the worst places to be in, uh, very close to Yellowstone and on the east coast of America. So, you know, I have relatives dotted all over the world, which is a good thing. But, um, uh, yeah, um, I assume, you know, I, I want family members to survive it. But, you know, I think the, the way to do it is you've got to play it very, very cool. Um, but, you see, increasingly, People have been calling me out and saying there's, there's some inconsistencies in my thinking, and the, there is. I mean, this, like, for example, uh, I'm, I mentioned to Gary that I'm quite, quite anti this. I, I really don't like the 
the the thing where people say, well, you can, you know, collapse is inevitable. You don't have to do 500 lone wolves. You don't have to do ecotage. You can just sit back and watch it. And I've always said that is terribly wrong. I still think that's wrong. But you see, I never really told them why and stuff. And so saying, um, you know, this civilization is going to cr crash and burn. There's no, nothing anybody can do about it. It can't reform itself. It's like a chronic alcoholic. Um, but in on its way out, it's going to be dangerous. And if you, for a number of reasons, I mentioned the humanitarian one, as we're loading people up on this planet just before a really terrible ordeal. So, um, you know, you um, for a number of reasons, accelerate. So if you, you know, so basically, <laughs> which is kind of inconsistent with some of the things I've been saying, like not do, do geoengineering. Well, yeah, I mean, you don't want to do solar radiation management or you know, marine cloud brightening, because that kind of just perpetuates this civilization. This civilization is destructive. E even if it went green and everybody transitioned and they stopped putting up CO2, that there's still a Malthusian catastrophe. They still chewn up the oceans, um, you know, uh, deoxygenating them, still, you know, moving incredible amounts of earth, poisoning stuff with mining and stuff like this. So, so it, you know, this, you can't get civilization and clean it up. So it's going to be destructive. Um, even, even in, as it's, even in collapse, it's collapse could be very messy. So the only thing that's really going to stop this, um, a massive campaign of civil disobedience, ecotage, any of those things, they, they can't actually stop it. They can't actually keep civilization down. People will be fighting over the last barrel of oil, even though, you know, it doesn't matter if you have green tech and, you know, sustainable energy and all these myths. Um, it's, you know, a barrel of oil is still going to be a, a ton of energy. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be valuable to the last drop. So it, or, so, all of these things are going to be added together and it just keeps the destructive machine going. The only thing that's going to stop it is, I mean, is the flipping. It's, you know, the activists and everybody has underestimated the size of the problem. Um, you know, what it would take to, to, you know, correct this and survive is much bigger problem than people think. It's really, you know, this alcoholic needs to drink itself to death. Um, and so, yeah, it implies some weird stuff, which I think we should surface. And that's that, like, almost anything's good. Green tech is good because, you know, it um, causes, uh, it removes the aerosol masking effect, causes global dimming. That's good for 0.6 of a degree. You, you want the temperature to go up and for the Greenland ice sheet to melt. And uh, because, you know, this if we have to go through a flipping, and we do, the, the, the Arctic tip 20 years ago, I mean, the, the, the Greenland ice sheet tip, the Arctic tip, you, you asked Tosti now, <laughs> the Arctic tip a lot before that. And all these fuckers knew. All these fuckers in the government, they all know that in the US government and in Russia, they know that. So they all going through the motions, you know, doing a scramble for the, the art. <laughs> it's like, they're cynical as fuck. Because they know exactly what happens after the BOE, they um, so the, the they they just stalling everybody with the IPCC and just keeping at the edge of cred credibility. Um, but uh, you know they intend to survive it. They 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 think it's survivable. And I I look at all these things like um, you know space program and stuff like that as. I always see it in, in terms of these are the guys' strategies for surviving the flipping. But I think it's all good. You know, there's, no, there's, uh, there's nothing wrong with it because some, some strategy might work. Um, we're in a terrible pickle because although we survived previous flippings, um, we, did the, we had attacked ecosystems. And the problem is, you know, the ecosystems are incredibly screwed especially the marine ecosystem so there's like 95 percent of the fish are gone it's like <laughs> that's a serious problem right there because that's what you know any survivors are going to need the oceans and need them intact um one of the problems with the flipping is it's 
the volcanic activity might cause a deoxygenation of the of the ocean. So you really want them to be in really good shape. But it's kind of like we we in the worst shape we can. We're like a degenerate alcoholic with sclerotic liver, about to go into you know a fight where you know a heavyweight championship boxing match um, that's you know might wipe out Muhammad Ali. And you know it's we. You know, if if that's the case, we 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 sliding downhill. So the sooner we go into this championship, out, the better. But anyway, that's that's my thinking on it. And so, um, yeah. Any questions at this stage? <laughs> Is it worth going back? I, I, I mean, I have I've read your book, um, and I sort of I think I understand what the physics is. But is it worth for just refreshing on what the actual um, physics of it? mean um is, is is it just literally the the kasparov effect means that the earth the polarity of the earth flips and then we have you're talking about volcanoes and all sorts of things and i can't remember exactly what the sort of model suggests is it tsunamis is it i mean what's the what's the summary of what it means so. yeah so i went over it in this morning but I, i'll go over it briefly so yeah, it's it's been known for a long time in a lot of sources that there there seem to be cataclysms in Earth's geological history. Um, they uh, Hapgood, Charles Hapgood, came up with a theory that uh, it's probably the Earth cr crust displacement because there are a lot of anomalies. Like for example, the tropical plants and things in not only in the Antarctic but in um, in the Arctic as well, um, and so. It's it's impossible that you know the kind of fossil record would be left if the you know if it was just warm and there wasn't sunlight. I mean, plants need sunlight. You can't genetically engineer a plant to not eat sunlight, like you can't train a horse not to eat. So um, if you so the the fossil record, you know, Antarctica hasn't moved much in terms of continental drift. So it's always kind of been where it is. So it's a very difficult thing to explain why. There's a big ice cap on it, and then there's evidence that, that it once was quite fertile. So uh, there are all these mysteries that you know um, Charles Hapgood came from the point of view of history. Um, he was quite a, quite a generalist, but he said there's so many pieces that suggest you know this kind of catastrophe, maybe Atlantis kind of thing. Um, and there's strands, there's folk memory, there's geological evidence and and stuff. So. He, he figured that it might be that the crust displaces. That would account for the fact that when we look at ice ages, they're not always global. They might be local, and it's because the poles are moving, stuff like that. Um, so when you look at it like that, it suddenly all makes a hell of a lot of sense. Um, he wrote a letter to Einstein, and Einstein liked the idea, but um, it didn't get anywhere many because they didn't know about the... Uh, they couldn't find a mechanism. You need a lot of uh, e energy. You need some, a lot of torque on the on the Earth to turn it. I mean, it's like a spinning top, and it's stable. Uh, while it's uh, you know has a spherical, you know, sp a spherical sort of equal distribution of mass and inertia. Um, but you see that uh, that return thing was really quite a good. Um, video on it and and it went through the whole thing and it said um you know about the Zanibakov effect right so vladimir Zanibakov was a cosmonaut and then on uh, he went to rescue the soyuz uh, space station and then the uh he discovered the that you know this flip with, with the wing that um that basically rotating body um that has three axis symmetry which um you know basically the tennis racket and a mass distribution of tennis it will actually spontaneously twist in this freaky way it just goes spinning along and then something goes whoop <laughs> and flips and then spins along a bit more and flips back um and so he instantly thought oh my god this the earth is probably subject to this he put a bit of modeling clay around the wing nut to see if a sphere would would do it and it did so immediately the soviets classified it um and uh, yeah, they from from then on the U.S. and this, the Soviets knew that the Earth flipped. So that that was the missing piece that 
Hapgood never got was that um, the energy is provided by the fact that you have to imagine that the Earth is through the Holocene uh, is it's its mass distribution is stable, just like that Veritasium guy said. So here the Veritasium guy ends on a very unfortunate note. He says, no, the Earth won't flip because it's uh, rotating down its um, uh, axis of maximum momentum, um, maximum inertia. But um, yeah, that's true, um, except he, he's not calculating the fact that the, the third pole in the Himalayas, the Hindu Kush Himalaya, field and the Greenland ice sheet has a mass of a huge amount of the Earth's mass um, and it's melting so it's it's being redistributed. It's complicated because of the rebound effect. The crust is kind of spongy like a soft mattress or something. But but uh, so so but you know the the mass it's kind of imagine it like it is a stable tennis racket and it's losing the handle kind of thing it's losing and so uh it's it's in essence it's changing its um its mass distribution so if you model the mass it looks a bit wonky like a wonky potato um but uh as it changes configuration it will flip and what what that will look like it'll be very dramatic um in about uh half flip 12 hours, maybe 24 hours, um, uh, the whole event. But it, it will be, there'll be seismic activity, volcanic activity, a lot of stress on the earth. Um, there'll be uh, um, uh, tidal forces, mainly. Um, it's it's important where the moon is in the event. Modeling it is hellishly difficult because it, it's all, you know, you have to even get the time of day right in terms of the moon and stuff like that. So. Um, but yeah, you won't go flying off the earth uh, with centripetal force or something like that. Um, it, uh, it'll just be, you'll see it from the sun. So you either get a very long day or you'll see the sun migrating. Um, and, and this is all in the Quran, by the way. <laughs> um, but you, the next day you will see the sun rising in the, in the, in the west. So, um, and setting in the east. So uh, It'll apparently the Earth will be the other end. Everybody in Australia, of course, will be fine because they'll be the right way up for the first time. Um, everybody else will be upside down after that. So, and then you have to get the Mercator projection, and you have to turn around as well. That's you have to turn the Mercator projection around on your wall maps. Um, but yeah. yeah. Uh, so reasoning behind um i can't remember from your book why that central location of sort of the um where you are that sea there the greek sea or you know that part of central Eurasia, europe why is that a best place <laughs> is it uh, volcanic, um, volcanic impact, you know? well, <laughs> this is one of the things we must uh, discuss but from the people that know, I think that the prevailing wisdom is uh, the, the the tidal forces and the stress um, are ma are maximized at so the, so you know the Earth is going around its geographical pole, it's spinning around, but when it flips, there's another oblique pole. Um, so you you want to be at the flip axis because that's where the tidal forces will be least, the stress will be least, because that's that's the bit where it's spinning, uh, um, you know, where it's flipping. So you want to be at the hub of the wheel. You don't want to be at the rim of the flip. So the, there's some evidence that the, f the flip axis, historical evidence, um, just, just the fact that, you know, Gobekli Tepe is where it is. And those those uh, civilizations started here after the Younger Dryas. Um, there's, that's a good hint that these people were the ones that, that survived. Um, so uh, my bet is it's really complex. It takes a lot of computing power to figure out exactly how the flip happens and to model it. But I think if you go through the historical evidence, then there's, there's good evidence that Santorini didn't blow up, which is, um, but it blew up later. So that, that's kind of good 
circumstantial evidence that it's a good place to be in the in the previous flips. I think that the previous flips will be similar. So when the previous flip was to do the mass displacement for the Laurentide um, ice sheet on North America, the Greenland ice sheet is just kind of a, a historical relic from the Laurentide ice sheet. It's just hanging on by a feather. But I sort of think it'd be roughly the same kind of uh, thing that you see. The, the survivors, the Aryans seem to have survived it. There's a lot of, uh, yeah, might as well talk about the sigil. <laughs> so the the sigil is a wheel that uh, Phoenicians are Aryans, get over it, anthropologists. Um, and the the sigil that I presented there is, is Teth, it's the Phoenician symbol for death. Now it's it's cool, you know. Why do they have a, <laughs> a symbol for death for a wheel? Um, there's a, there's a lot of um, kind of hints. The the Aryans invented a wheel. By India, it becomes the wheel of Dharma. So this I see the way they see it, or they seem to have seen it. If you look at folklore, is that they they thought the flip was a a punishment for you know hubris of of humanity. If it wasn't then, it certainly is now. <laughs> so, so, um, so yeah, they, they thought it was a punishment of the gods for um, the people of, of that time, so that they thought it was, you know, kind of getting their comeuppance or their, their karma, catching up with them. So this idea of a wheel of karma and, um, and the, the spin heavens, there's lots of um, kind of references to it. So it's almost like they invented the wheel as a, you know, an afterthought, as a symbolic afterthought of, of the cosmos rather than, you know, a practical thing to stick on a cart. It seems to have that symbolic, uh, uh, you know, meaning first um, and then become a practical thing as a kind of afterthought, I think. But yeah, so. Um, so I made the the sigil as Teth. It's it's in essence the the symbol in the XR um, symbol, you know, minus the bar in the top and bottom of the hourglass. But they they struck on the the artist that did that, the street artist. He, he struck on the Teth symbol. I don't know if he knew what he was doing or if he did it by chance. But anyway, that's important symbol. Now the we said that we had just two arrows going out and I didn't, I didn't like it because it doesn't look very good. It just looks like cent centrifugal force and stuff. And, you know, um, uh, so I wanted to make it a flip. So I just made, made the, the arrow heads. I just made them hooked. Uh, unfortunately, if you do that, uh, so somebody quickly pointed out that, uh, well, it looks a bit like a swastika. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> funny you should say that. Um, it's too bad about the Nazis because the, they appropriated the swastika and it's filled with meaning. We shouldn't, we shouldn't let them get away with that. But, but anyway, just as a heads up, if you're talking about Teth, it's, it's theta in, in Greek, they got the letter theta from it is, it's like you, you won't get far away from the swastika. The swastika will keep on coming back to haunt you. There's all of this stuff is a little bit mystical and woo woo, but uh, the swastika is deeply embedded in all of it, so you get over it. Uh, you, if we use that symbol, somebody's going to accuse us of hiding, a, doing a dog whistle for a swastika. But that—that's the reality of it. It's we, we are talking about the Aryans, and the Aryans are all about swastikas. So Schliemann and so found that those swastikas everywhere in Troy, thousands of them. And it's, you know, it's the symbol of the Jains and it's, sort of, you know, the Indo-Aryans and all of those guys in India. So, yeah, it's, um, you, you just got to live with it. But, yeah, um, Lionel said uh, he, he liked it by the sounds of things. He said that it looks like a buzzsaw, you know, cutting through the planks of ignorance and hypocrisy. And, I thought, yeah, it's, I like that. It's, yeah. It, it has quite a lot of energy and like a circular motion and stuff. So I think it's kind of useful from that point of view. Um, it looks kind of quite aggressive, but I, I think it's all, that's all kind of val valuable. 
Um, there's a lot I could say about the symbology in it. Um, it goes, it goes quite deep. But if uh, everybody is okay with the symbol, um, what I would suggest as part of um, this new direction for the extinction hunt is that that we we invest it right. So everybody takes the symbol and does their own. Because uh, we all distribute it all over the world, I don't think it works to do a big investment settlement. So this is what I'm going to suggest, is that we take, um, we do our own in whatever way it means to us personally, whatever we feel is a personal way of investing the symbol with meaning, we invest our own personal meaning. So then I'm going to suggest we, we do it individually and surprise each other. We just go and take a video um, of our ceremony or whatever action we do to invest, to invest it. And then, um, you know, I think we should individually um, go to Lionel and ask him to, you know, vet our proposed ceremony. So we give our personal ceremony what we're going to do for the investment ceremony, um, take it to Lionel and get him to offer suggestions and critique it. And then we go and do it, video it. Um, you don't have to be in the video if you want to be anonymous or something. Just, just you know, don't, uh, don't show your face in the video. And then we all post about post them up, um, maybe in one big one or what, see how it comes out. But anyway, we just have a, a big ceremony, you know, a big thing afterwards to say what we did, um, what what uh, meant something personal to us and uh, whatever. But it, but I th what I'm going to suggest is we do it on the winter solstice, um, the 21st of December, which is exactly one month from today. So as I think of something, you know, uh, present it to, to Lionel. <laughs> Somebody said yay. <laughs> uh, so present it to Lionel, then, then on the night of the 21st or the day, whatever, noon or midnight, whatever, evening, sunset, sunrise, whatever means something to you on the, on the solstice, uh, the winter solstice. Uh, it was the traditional day for you know, the flip in the year. Uh, it is the most auspicious day for this. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I'm sure at Quebec Tepe, um, they had a summer and winter solstice festival. So, um, yeah, that's my suggestion. Um, and that, um, yeah, we'll... we'll circle back after it if everybody likes that but, but go and think up what you'd like to do um refer it to, to lionel um and then go and record it for the rest of us to see and we'll, we'll do it on the 21st and separately and then sh you know, show post all our videos and show it but i've um yeah uh so yeah uh, does everybody like that <laughs> <laughs> Do I have a second? Should we vote on it? Yeah, I always make a, a fire on every solstice in June and, and in December that night for years, like since I'm a child. So it's a very symbolic night. So it could be. So yeah, I, I'd like that. Sounds good. Well, don't don't give away what you what you're gonna do. <laughs> yeah, the ceremony, the ceremony can be as simple as you like. Um, do do whatever you like, just whatever. Uh, it, it's you see what you're really doing there by investing it is is okay. I'm gonna get woo here, but it's invest your psychic energy in it. So uh, it must be meaningful to you. Um, you know, then just by into subjectivity. Yeah, all. Over the world, when when we use that symbol, a little bit of that will will go into it. Um, you, you don't have to slash a wrist and put a pint of blood on it. <laughs> Whatever has has uh, has some meaning. You, uh, think about making a sacrifice to symbolic, many or literal. Um, don't make it a human sacrifice or a baby or a dog or a goat. Or <laughs> Otherwise, we'll be dead in the water before we started. But, um, uh, yeah, think about it. And then, okay, if we, so that's, that's one thing I suggest. 
Um, then the the other thing is okay. So I suggested we do a manifesto and go through we, we, where we just lay our cards on the table because I think everybody's just off doing their own crazy shit, and you know um, maybe this is our crazy shit, or um, you know. Um, but uh, I think we should just forget about XR. Um, XR's pile of nothing. Um, Faulty, I think, I think we should just. just yes. <laughs> yes, finally. <laughs> yeah. Um, Faulty is, uh, I think we should just tell them what we're doing and um, just tell them what we think uh, that, that he's going nowhere. Um, but, you know, the. Uh, I think once we got the manifesto, I'd like to say, look, because uh, <laughs> uh, I agreed with him. We all agreed on the the way forward. Uh, then they they went off and did IB. Um, and, you know, you got, it's not working out. They were supposed to have hundreds of arrests. And then, you know, next year it was supposed to have thousands. And then you were supposed to overthrow the government in six months. And it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's not realistic. It's not um, you know, getting detached from reality because the, the, the world doesn't work that way. This isn't Gandhi's world. This isn't MLK. Um, you know, doing a moral crusade is not possible in the age of the metaverse and TikTok. And it's just uh, you're talking a different language from a different time. Um, so sure, you can and, you know, get nine arrests, but it's like you're not going to get everybody come out in a moral outrage against, um, you know, brown people <laughs> um, having droughts and food insecurity. It's, you know, uh, liberals are hypocrites. They're fat, dumb, and happy. They're selfish. They, I mean, come on. The middle classes and bourgeois, they're disgusting. They, they are the disgusting ones. So for Faulty to go around and say, you know, like, it's disgusting. It's like, come on. The middle class is disgusting. The middle class would with they you're gonna go out as a Britain in a you know in the middle class Britain you're gonna go out and buy a cell phone next year the next model of the icon the Apple icon that comes out you're gonna rush to go out there knowing full well that you know little African kids suffered and died in a cobalt mine for it you don't give a fucking shit so like talking, talking to, these to these people, people about moral moral outrage outrage. Is, is a moral, a moral outrage. Outrage. I must admit, I, I am really disappointed with him because I I thought that you know you went all you came to UK, you know you had meetings with him. He seemed to be taking us seriously and you seriously, and he was he seemed to be investing the time. I mean, I don't know, maybe I read it wrong, but it just seems like he, like, yeah, he just he's just a waste. Yeah, of time. He <laughs> like, he's just he's just deluded, isn't he? Like. Uh, he did invest the time. He's he's not really deluded. He's just um, just not the in the right time. So it's, it's so he he did invest the time in me. I think what it was is um, he thought I had money. So um, I told him I wasn't rich, and he looked visibly disappointed. So I think I think he mistook me for some rich guy on a yacht, which um, actually a poor guy on a yacht. Not everybody knows. You can actually be a sea gypsy and be dead poor. <laughs> but, um, but uh, yeah, um, the main thing was is he didn't understand America. And so he thought, yeah, he needs some help on how to approach America. But it didn't, it always didn't really work to say, you know, once, once he achieves this, you know, miracle of, you know, revolution in, in the UK, then to start mid next year on America, in this like, well, I said, you know, those tactics won't work. They're not going to work in America. I don't I mean, I, they were not going to work in Britain. <laughs> but, um, he's completely vested in this, you know, cutting edge social science of you. Know, this is what decades of social science has said, you know, this works. And it's Erica Chenoweth. And it's like, it's horseshit. I mean, the left, what, what successes have the left? ever had after Vietnam and maybe North Vietnam. And it was that was violent. It was a violent rebellion. So it's like the, the left has been useless. What does the CND achieve? What what did the anti-apartheid movement do? The anti-apartheid movement didn't end 
didn't end apartheid. Come in for crying out loud. Your analysis can't be that shallow. And it's like, you know, all the decades of environmentalism, all it did was go and bolster the bright green lies and the green tech industry. So it boosted the stock market. And the stock market is this you know, fossil machine. So all the green, you know, we, we just seen $2 trillion signed by Biden. That's $2 trillion fossil fuel. That's basically $2 trillion of carbon just, just about to be pumped into there. Now, as the Extinction Party, I think we should celebrate it because that's going to take a, a slice off Greenland for sure. But, uh, yeah, and we should be glad about it. But if, you, if your aim is to reform the system, it's like, I mean, come on. You know, yeah, that's, that, like, that's what I mean. He, if he was really serious, if he, was, if he wasn't deluded, he would, have, he would have been able to adapt and seen that it's not working. And I thought he was radical. You thought he was radical. He seems sort of radical in some ways, but then ultimately he just still wants to maintain the system. He's just being softly, softly, like, go sideways with Insulate Britain, which is just, you know, that's just ridiculous. No, no, he, he is radical. He's more radical than you can possibly imagine. Um, the, the, you know, the Insulate Britain is just a strategy. It's just an easy win. Um, so you can gain credibility and then consolidate um, yeah, the XR and the, the you know all these kind of deadbeats. Uh, so basically, he, you know, he wants to be king of the crusties, and so he's going to show them these tactics work. And well, they they work because they got in the news. Uh, they're supposed to get arrests, and then you know, the government's supposed to capitulate and say, okay, we'll we'll do you know Green Homes Grant. We'll revive it again, and then we say, see, it works. But it's not going to work for a number of reasons. One of them is that the government doesn't want to hand him a win. The one, you know, Pretty Patel wants to hand him a fucking jail sentence. So he's walking into a jail. He doesn't. He he thinks that that's cool because it's Gandhi. He thinks, yeah, you know, okay, I'll take two years in jail. No, you might do ten. They might. They might. If if they think you're ready for two, they'll give you ten. You know, it's like the. And then what you're going to do? I mean, Ted Ted Kaczynski is more of a radical than you and you can't you know he's uh, he's gonna rot and die in jail nobody's gonna do the anti-tech revolution i don't believe anybody's you know there are a number of people out there there are a lot of lone wolves and they, you know uh, ted kaczynski's thinking is correct uh he's he's not gonna i don't don't see the anti-tech revolution working because um uh, you know, you can just see the milkman, say, in the photographs during the Blitz. You know, these these guys, the guy, the guy's ability to carry on doing, you know, normal normally in diversity is unbelievable. So, I mean, you, you know, the photos I'm talking about during the Blitz, they have like milkman walking, walking through, through the, the rubble. <laughs> and then you've got these like office, you know, there's, there's a famous picture of this guy guy sitting in the rubble of his office in London after the Blitz. And he's sitting there, you know, with his, with a, his secretary sitting on a suitcase, um, typing, you know, or taking short, shorthand on her lap. And he's sitting there, you know, standing in the rubble like a, a good British soldier, you know, not soldier, I mean, businessman, just saying like, you know, oh, it takes more than, you know, a bomb on my company to shut me down, you know. And so it's like faced with that kind of, you know, mentality, it's like these people are going to, you know, there, there's not going to be a drop of oil left, left in, in the ground. The, the only thing, I mean, look, look at all these deluded people saying, you know, like Michael Mann and Hanson and stuff, and Gibbons. And it's, it's like, you know, for Christ's sake, guys, you know, they're not going to stop. I mean, they would... You know, this is an alcoholic that's going to drink himself to death. So it's just like, you know, celebrate it. Give him more whiskey and make sure, he, you know, it's unfortunate. It would be nice if people stop CO2. But you just think, no, the more CO2, the better. So it's like, you know, might as well take funding from Exxon and just say, like, Exxon, we've got, we've got the best excuse to burn, carry on burning oil. Is that, like, we're fucked. The flipping's happening. 
you might as well carry on. I mean, look at India and China and stuff. It's like, what, you're going to get them to, you know, Britain? Oh, they're going to, because one thing is Xi, Xi Jinping, Pube, he really respects Britain and he always takes Britain's example, doesn't he? So Britain's going to go green and prosper and show them how wonderful it is to be, you know, lead the world in green tech. It's like, come on, this is fantasy. And then, um, and then Pube says, oh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I'll, I'll follow your example and clean up my act. It's like, come on. Is he's going to, India and China are, are going to raise the standard of living. You know, there's the standard of living of a Chinese person is half of what it is of an American. They're going to try and beat Xi Jinping's ass depends on him beating the standard of living of an American. This planet does not support 300 million Americans. And he's going to try and add 1.4 billion people living like Americans. So like, well, this is good. Because in the process, you're going to get the flipping. In. So yeah, right, right in the middle. So well, the best thing I was saying this morning, the best thing that could happen is Xi Jinping and India and Africa and that, they go and burn all the fossil fuels. Like, burn the coal, guys. Go and do it. Go and raise your standards of living. You know, social justice. You want to be a materialistic Western, Westerner. Go and knock yourself out. You know, burn all that coal. You Go and be a materialist. You'll find out how fun capitalism is, is you fucking idiots. And then say, okay, so you're not, you know, India just said it, the cop. We're not going to stop until we caught up with you. Okay, heroes. So go and knock yourself out. Go and get, you know, become the, the stupidest fucking rigid, uh, you know, billionaire playboy you want to be. And then, yeah, knock yourself out because Southeast Asia, you do not want to be in an opening. So have your Tara, melt the fucking Greenland your ice cap and uh, get it over with. You know, that's uh, brilliant. All right, so you get what you want. Um, we get the flipping. It's great. All works out. Even better is going to, you know, burn all the fossil fuel. Just take us up to about 500 parts per million. And then um, then stop burning coal and go green. Uh, because then we'll lose the, you know, um, the global dimming. We'll lose the aerosol masking effect. And then we'll add possibly 0.6 degrees to 1 degree. That'll be great. Great after five five hundred parts per million, and that will definitely cause the flipping. So it's like everybody wins. It's like you know, support Exxon burning fossil fuels, support Xi Jinping and growing the, the, you know, the, the economy. It's like you know, it's like, so now now you're a rich Westerner, you know, materialist, um, you know, happy now. Great. Now it's time to die. Goodbye, South Asia. No one in South Asia is going to survive that flip now. It's, it's going to be a horror story. India is going to be a horror story. You know, that it's ironic because they have our symbol, <laughs> the Dharma, wheel of Dharma on their fucking flag. And like, if ever there's going to be a fucking Dharma accounting, <laughs> it's going to be in India or South Asia. So, but anyway, you know, it all works out, you know, like Africa is a bit of a disappointment because if, you, you know, the, Africa has a lot of environmental niches, the, the Chances that somebody survives in Africa with so many, with diversity is uh, there's a lot of diversity in Africa. So chances of survivors of the flipping being in Africa are quite good. As time goes on, they get worse and worse because they're, they're being, you know, everybody's being co-opted into the monoculture. They're becoming more and more of a Malthusian catastrophe. Um, so, yeah, that's that's sad. But, yeah, it's, um, but, yeah. Um, Anyway, uh, you see, you see how it changes things if we just just put our cards on the table and say, "Look, the Philippines happening." I've been I've been trying to break this to everybody gently, but I've just found I never learn that you can't be subtle today. But you, you can't do anything subtle. You can't say anything. You're basically bludgeoning people over the head. It's uh, they don't hear you. So it's like, okay, well, everybody's kind of deaf. So it's you know, you got. To, I think we should just start shouting about the the flipping. And I mean, it, you know, you can't expect too much. It's basically the first thing that will happen is somebody will come up with some flimsy lame arch shill who says, oh, you know, and they'll do a debunking, you know, like Carolyn Ripple's debunking of the clathrate gun, which is, you know, just pathetic. But that, that's, uh, you know, that's, they, 
they uh, most people will probably ignore us. But it's again, it's kind of a bit of the Gandhi. First they ignore you, then they fight you, um, then uh, we win. Uh, but you know, it's it's just from our point of view is you just want to tell people what's coming, and so and so that you know they you can save a lot of misery when because the interpretations of this is gonna, it's going to be a very very bizarre day. All the religious people are going to think it's the it's the rapture. All the ufologists will think UFO UFOs have arrived. You know, it's going to be pretty Douglas Adams restaurant at the end of the universe. A lot of this looks like Douglas Adams. He was a very smart cookie. But uh, yeah, everybody's going to have their different interpretations of what's going on, and they're all going to be wrong. So, if what would be nice is if people, you know thought up survival strategies and they were as diverse as possible. Um, it's like, you know, even if, uh, even if we all washed up, it doesn't excuse the pun, but uh, if, if it's all wrong, it doesn't really matter because um, it's good for people to be confronted with their mortality. And every way you look at it, even if the system was reformable and the, you know, the environment, dream as everybody would get a conscience and stuff is well the, the shortest route to that too ironically is if people gave up hope and uh, started getting in touch with immortality so it works from any any point away i can't really see a downside of telling people uh, you don't want people to be it, it's cruel to let people you know swan along in you know uh, thinking they're going to live forever uh, and then give, have them a big shock, you know, they, they would say to you, I mean, if, if you're a doctor and you found somebody had cancer or something, you say, well, I don't want to spoil their last time on earth, so I'm just not going to tell them they've got a couple of years to live. <laughs> it's like, well, you, that, that would be completely wrong because they're probably living a ship life, thinking it will pay back, they're working for their retirement or all number of delusions that are never going to happen. It's all the transhumanists. I mean, God bless them. They're working for... 100 year horizon we only probably got like 10 20 <laughs> so it's like you know and also it's not you can't nail it like it, it looks a bit like mcpherson you know it's pro I, probably mcpherson's more right than wrong it's probably about 2026 20, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of action but it's it's impossible to time so and that's a good thing because it, you don't want people to time it if you could time it down to the second, you get you get some very unenlightened behavior. Uh, it's kind of, kind of, but you see, if uh, if people know that they're heading for disaster, and they you see they they need to get out of this mindset, the Michael Mann mindset that we still have agency. No, we fucking don't. We 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 do have some agency. We can accelerate. So in other words. Some geoengineering is good. I would advocate that we go and put uh, sprinkle soot on the Greenland ice sheet to get it to melt faster. That's the kind of geoengineering you want. <laughs> so, you know, that kind of thing is uh, is good. But, uh, yeah. So, yeah, that's what I think. I think we should go out on social media and uh, start uh, doing doing stuff after we've got the manifesto and we all agree on it and kind of thing. And then we've got the, got the desiderata so we can tell people how to behave, <laughs> how we think what's a desirable behavior going forward. And we, we have exactly what we think on all these subjects nailed down. So we make sure our thinking is entirely consistent and our policy on like everything from veganism to um, having children and stuff and, is is all ironed out and so um you know and then uh i think it's worth panel beating it by exposing it to all the morons because a all the stuff they say will be predictable and so we should cover our bases before we even start but uh second you know it it needs to be kind of battle tested that these people we need our assumptions challenged so i mean part of the thing about it is, uh, just developing a manifesto is to try and disprove uh, the theory. Try and prove ourselves wrong in every possible way we can. I've tried, and the more I try, uh, the more it reinforces the theory. I just like see more and more 
that it's just pretty wrong. But if if you can you know find a thing that says no, it's Hapgood was wrong, everything was wrong. It's like it's never going to happen, or or it's it wouldn't happen in a thousand years or something. You know, it's like something like that. But yeah, I I uh, I don't think you will find that. I think if you start looking at it, you'll you'll see those things. But I'd I'd certainly like to have, have a few theories on what what's what it would be like um, in an Earth flip. What what it is like to experience them, and you know. Other things you might you might want to go put it. Uh, a, 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 a it sounds a bit like what would happen if an asteroid hit. You're talking about volcanoes going off and big tsunamis, and <laughs> it's, it doesn't sound too dissimilar. And if for nothing else, this whole tactic will end up making us look very culty. <laughs> um, one of, one of the and one of and the you know. You, you can make like memes too, like the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Flippany. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's I mean, that's where I'm kind of going with the cartoons and stuff. I wanted to talk about those cartoons as well. But no, just in terms of the asteroid is, yeah, that, so uh, Graham Hancock and stuff like that, and those guys, they are mistaking the cosmic thing. So I just posted something from New Scientist there with every, you know, on the KT boundary, the Cretaceous tertiary boundary where there was the biggest mass extinction of all. Um, and then that's traditionally put down to be a comet. But the comet thing doesn't really work because the comet, comets have um, uh, these kind of micro diamonds, there's micro crystals and stuff that are clear uh, things of uh, spherules from a comet impact. And they're not really there, the younger dryers. So, so all the people that believe that the climate change of the younger dryers was a comet. So, so Guys like um, uh, Graham Hancock um, and a few others, um, Bovalt and, and those guys, they, they they think that Gobekli Tepe is a warning uh, that, you know, it's a common strike. But, you know, it's, it's you know, why would they warn? Why would they put a time capsule in to warn people? I mean, what are people supposed to do about a comment? How would... How do they know that the comet's coming back? It doesn't make any sense at all. Um, and the, you know, the evidence. So they find a little bit of evidence for comet things, but what the evidence strongly says is that it's volcanic activity. So the thing that I just posted from New Scientists about the KT boundary, it's seismic and volcanic, and it's a very big cold snap, followed by severe heating afterwards. So yeah, it's. Um, yeah, the comet theory is, you see, what the comet theory doesn't hold up. But you see, so people don't that don't know about the Earth flip, as soon as you know about the Earth flip, everything falls into place. And um, so it's hard to doubt after, after a little while. Yeah, I read about the, you're talking about the um, dinosaurs going extinct, right? Yeah, I read yeah. about the I read about mass global volcanism in, in that one, yeah, and then the, the cold that came after. And it seems that they like put the comet on top of that story as well. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. Like they say that the volcanism was happening and then the meteor hit in Mexico's bay or something. Yeah. Yeah, horse. <laughs> like the Gulf of Mexico is a comet strike. It's like that was Asimov. It's bullshit. Can I, there, can I, there, there's no way the Gulf. Of Mexico can I say is something? I was just. Material. Can I say something? Is just coming to my mind there because I really like the way uh, the Hugh you adapting to where we were going because for the last few weeks or months even we were going nowhere. I agree, and there was increasing kind of frustration on my side. I thought because. We had invested a lot of enthusiasm and energy and thinking with XR. And so I think I really like the way that you just change direction. The wind is going enough from coming from another place. We, we follow that wind and we see where it takes us. And I think I, I feel my, my gods are telling me it's good. I, I, I'm, 
I'm not a physicist and I, I find it hard to understand everything about rotational bodies and stuff. So I'm trying to look at what you're saying. I've tried to look at that for the last two years and I still find it difficult to. But I still I still think that we we should not give up on what we were talking about acquiring skills and sharing skills and building up a, a, you know a good body and being in a healthy frame of mind and also uh, and also our spiritual side because we need to to prepare whether we're going to survive this or not we want to be in good shape and uh, even if we dismiss uh, permaculture and all these things as maybe bad well a, a bad attitude for prepping at the same time if we're feeding ourselves well and we're doing things right we're, we're getting a good training and if we survive well we're in a good, better place um you know but I, I really like the way that you have uh you just said okay this is not working we throw it away and we try something else and i, I like that attitude and i i'm happy to to follow up on that do you know and give it a try really i like that thank you yeah thanks yeah, yeah. Um, Tom, are you going to say something? So somebody going to say something? No, I was just uh, concurring what Sophie said. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well said. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah. It's kind of uh, yeah. It's where, it's where I kind of wanted to go uh, from all along. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm learning what's possible um, as, as as things go, but. Um, uh, yeah, what are, what are ones? Oh, yeah, um, yeah. In terms of preparation, yeah, you. I think people have to have like a warrior spirit. So you you <laughs> you need um, because nobody really knows when it would happen. It's it's very hard to time. So you know, you, um, I think in terms of like particularly doomers, um, get themselves into a depressive rut and. Uh, it it helps to think, you know, that a there's nothing you can do, and b there, there is some, you can you might be able to survive. That's more right size changing the whole world and trying to get the you know trying to do what XR is trying to do, and so, so you know it's uh, all the jihadis and all the Muslims and trying to convert them to the right faith. All these massive massive undertakings, you know. Rupert Reed and wanting to do a Manhattan project to save the planet and save the civilization and, and you know, space, uh, going to space, all these gargantuan uh, delusions. It, it kind of um, makes it a bit more right sized if you think, uh, how do I squeak through this? Because that's something you can do as an individual. You could navigate this as an individual. And so I, I personally intend to. <laughs> and so in the middle of losing all hope, you suddenly think, well, you've actually got a, a real task to try and survive this. You, uh, the, the really wrong thing is uh, yeah, it, to all these people that think, well, you want to try and preserve stuff. We want to try and preserve writing. And you want to try and preserve the this civilization. And you say, no, what for? It's like, on the other side of this, nobody's got any use for fucking writing. All the knowledge that we've built up, everything we know about science, hunter-gatherers don't need that shit. So uh, it's, it's all, all a big Yeah, it always baffles me. That's so well said. The, the It's the scale of it that people just... I just don't understand why people can't see that the scale of it is just impossible. Like you're saying, all these grand ideas, these grand projects that you would need to do. And then they can't, they still can't see that. It, it, what are you going to do? Like, if you were to achieve that, it's not going to solve the problem, is it? People just can't, their logic is just so wedded to civilization, basically. It's, yeah. Um, just the scale of it is just impossible to to do any of these like geoengineering projects, all these things. It's just it, it, it's, it's, it's um, um, delusion. Yeah, it's trying to maintain the continuity and permanence, but it's like you know things decay and die in this culture. You know, it's it, this is its time. It needs to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. 
exactly. You see, um, a, a lot of the stuff I've been doing is a little bit disingenuous um, because just for a fact. So, for example, I actually love tech. I actually love cities. <laughs> I love our culture. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> I can admit to it. But the, um, you know, the thing is that uh, I always pretend uh, that's not and be anti transhumanist and anti all of these achievements that we have actually achieved. But the the thing is, um, they are if if you just accept that that they you know. Our time is just about ended, um, and certainly the civilization's time has ended. You can celebrate all these things. You don't have to do the nutty stuff where, say, AI is going to cause the rapture of the nerds and we're all going to be homo deus and all this really crap shit. You can say, what what we've done, I mean, it's mad. It's completely mad. From the statue of David all the way to the atomic bomb, it's it's mad, crazy shit. No one should be doing this stuff. But it's been pretty amazing. <laughs> it's it's astounding. It is, it's incredible on so many levels what humans have done. And so, but you you know, it's now time to celebrate it and wave it goodbye. Um, I I feel and so it's I think it's time to just be honest and say like I love it all. I you know, um, but it's it's a grand experiment we've done, but um, it ain't going anywhere. It's so. So anyway, if it, bar the flipping, it, it would still, we're still going to wipe ourselves out. We still might wipe ourselves out. You see, collapse is going to happen anyway. And, and collapse, it, as I say again and again, collapse is very likely to take us all out. So you want collapse to happen quickly. You want it to happen soon. You don't want this, Just, you know. Yeah geoengineering and all to run and for the, you know every day that this civilization carries on more people are added to the planet the size of the catastrophe and the chances that anybody squeaks through are going down so if if fault is looking for an unconscionable moral crusade that's it is, is that but but he's inconsistent in his actions because he's he's saying you know like well we take over the government like great and now what well, then you do citizens' assemblies. They all get advised by all these experts. And you say, well, the experts are all conflicted. They're all compromised. The sciences will be bought. And so, you know, they're going to get all contradictory advice. And where advice? And where's the citizens' assembly going to land? On every single decision, it's going to do what's most comfortable for fat, happy, dumb cattle. And they, the public... You know, you just look at the research, XR, all these guys, they refuse to look at the research that, sh that, that shows that, that actually the average Briton is far, far more conservative about climate change or any kind of green activity than the government. So the government is more radical on ch climate change than the electorate. So once the, the electorate, once you source people by sortition and put them into a parliament or a citizens' assembly, a revolutionary council, that they, they're going to be worse than the government. They're going to be worse than your worst conservative. So, so all, all their decisions are going to be growth, growth and, 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 uh, and, uh, and so, 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 so. Because you, you want the government in charge, you want them burning fossil fuels. Um, and so, yeah, we can get the flipping over with and get this madness to end. We want the civilization to civilize itself to death. So, yeah, reforming the system, austerity, green stuff is not good. Because they just, they just straight up at risk. risk. Yeah, I think when it's healthy every day now, I just remind myself that all of this is going away. And as you were saying, it's not that I... It, I sort of, it's a love-hate thing. Yeah, everything we've achieved is is brilliant. It's amazing. Um, the world we live in, all of the things we have. But it's good to just remind yourself that's going away. And as we've been saying, to just start restricting yourself. You know, uh, last week I did a, I think I did a 12-hour fast. Um, 
so that was good and just start going without you know last night I camped out in the woods I did that again just to I don't know <laughs> do something a bit different just to start you know adding variety and chaos to the mix uh, in our daily lives I think we don't say enough about our psychology we need to start testing ourselves just doing without certain things or just mixing it up just being random <laughs> yeah that's brilliant that's really brilliant I'm really encouraged by that that's really nice to hear but you know in you know you can go hog wild if you you can you can fly all you want and just say like you know tell people yeah I fly it's like we need to add uh, more co2 so that we melt the green cap and and start the flipping it's like because you know, the sooner this this uh, alcoholic drinks itself to death, the better. So it's like, yeah, go on wild. You can do anything. Go go party, go burn carbon, go. Or you can go and be green and national and become a vegetarian and whatever. It's really very forgiving. The, <laughs> once, once you embrace the, the fact that uh, everything is a kind of a vanity, um, yeah, it's... You don't really know. I mean, everything kind of works. You can't be a psychotic in, individual in Silicon Valley trying to climb up the slippery pole. It's like, yeah, whatever's. You got ten years, maybe twenty, and it's all over. So knock yourself out. Go do whatever you want. What, what, what? I think what's really bad is people don't realize that the amusement park is closing. Has a closing time. They need to know that it has a shelf life and it's very short. No, you know, maybe it's closing today. Maybe it's closing in 10 years, 20 years. I don't think it's closing in 2100. <laughs> in fact, in the in the earlier meeting today, I gave a timeline. And uh, yeah, that's, that's just a guess. It's just supposition. But like, this is happening very soon. You, so yeah, the, what this puts you, it forces you into a position where you look at all these things and say, okay, how close? But the problem is, we don't know the exact point where the mass distribution causes the flip. So we just know we're getting there and we're getting there faster. And that's all, all we really know. Um, you can't time it down to the hour. Into, so, you know, you, you can't say, okay, when it happens, I'm going to make sure I'm in an aircraft. It's like, come on. The president of the United States is not going to survive the flip. Now. Because as soon as it happens, if, if, if it happened like tomorrow, the, he would he would go into Air Force One. Well, you know all that volcanic and that activity and stuff is going to fall out of the sky, man. There's the aircraft's going to ingest all these fucking particulate from the volcano because Air Force One's going to ditch in the ocean. But he, you know, even if it didn't, where would it land? I mean, you just fly around. You know, the the grid's not going to survive. You see, this is is really really quite bad. The the things. If you do a little Google about the Earth flip or something, what you'll find is the geomagnetic. So you can't confuse the geomagnetic. Everybody knows about the geomagnetic Earth flip. Now, it gets complicated with the geomagnetic Earth flip because it's inconceivable that the, the, there isn't some, you know, some kind of dynamic in the Earth's core. Uh, the geomagnetism is caused by the flow of all these iron molten iron in the, in the core so that flow must change there's evidence for a dramatic um uh magnetic pole reversal at just the same time you they, they can see magma but they can see there's been a pole flip during you know, the time it took for the magma to cool so in other words in 12 hours so that you can, there is geological evidence that there's some component is that magnetic pole flip. You don't want to dwell too much on the, the magnetic pole flip because it's a red herring. We don't really know the com magnetic pole comp com component and, and how it contributes, although you know that it must contribute. Um, so, But it means that while all this flip is going on, you might have to cope with a lot of ultraviolet C, UVB and C, because uh, you might lose the Van Allen belts and it might disappear and then come back again afterwards. That, all that kind of thing is a possibility too. Anyway, I hope I'm painting the picture that this is not a very good day <laughs> when this happens. This is not... <laughs> so, but, but, but it's all the nuclear power plants and stuff. 
power plants going off or some of them not being able to well, go back up and maintain with generators and whatnot? <laughs> God, it doesn't bear thinking about it. Well, well, you see, this is the kind of thing that I want to put in the manifesto is because there, there's some things you definitely don't want done. So you do want people to punch out CO2. That's a good thing because it basically accelerates it. You don't want what's coming, and that's the, all these nutcases that are going to do nuclear. So we already got 410 nuclear plants. That's not going to be pretty. That's going to be a real problem. Those are going to be a serious problem for the survivors. So you definitely want to stop the nuclear program. If you're talking about monkey wrenching and stuff like that, you definitely want to you know, stop those. Do anything you can to stop those because those are, you know, that's something that nobody had to contend with in, you know, before. But, you know, I mean, I just this idiotic love lock thing is like, boy, that, you know, I hope he dies soon. He's like, the, the, um, his thing about, yeah, yeah, we must all go nuclear. It's like, oh, you fucking idiot. Just go and fucking die, please. It's a, like, you know, you don't want to go nuclear. I mean, in any, in a, even if the, even if the flipping never happened, the, the, Fuki, you know, there was Lovelock saying, Fukushima wasn't a nuclear accident. It was a tsunami. Oh, really? It's like, so they're not going to be any more tsunamis. <laughs> it's like, no, it was a nuclear accident. The fucking thing melted down. Why? Because it got cut off from the grid for more than 72 hours. You, the, all those power stations, they melt down. If they've got about 72 hours of diesel. But those are nuclear power stations, they need electricity, ironically, to stay up. They can't generate the electricity they need to stay up. So, so in any kind of emergency with the grid, they shut those things down. But, but if, yeah, if, 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 if it's the not, not there, there they're they're not 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 yeah, he, he's an engineer, isn't he? He's a different generation. He's coming from the perspective of, you know, we need to power the civilization forever, you know, and the best way to do that is with nuclear technology, you know. Like, <laughs> so, but the guy is, yeah, he, I don't know what is. It's funny, yeah. He's he's he has gone down in my estimation actually in that respect. Um, his earlier work was better, <laughs> but he's talking about you know we'll all live in cities and like like termite mounds, you know, air conditioned cities and all this nonsense. And as well, he he's a believer that AI, uh, artificial intelligence, could cause us a major problem. You know, similar to Hawking and. Other yeah, and he wants geoengineering and stuff. So it's, it's like of of the of the bad string it out kind. Yeah, you you know those kind of guys are dangerous. They're really dangerous um, because ultimately they believe in the impossible, and that's carrying on with this civilization. So so the alcoholics that they they're part of the problem. The alcoholics that think they can carry on drinking with impunity and saying no, your liver's already shot. You've got, you're on the short haul. You're sclerotic, just, you're just a basket case. Um, get your affairs in order and write your will. Is uh, But anyway, he's inconsistent in his thinking because he came up with Gaia and everything self-compensating. Well, obviously, that implies that our civilization will be self-compensated for by nature. It's like, so look out. <laughs> if you... If there's an equal opposite reaction to, well, there's going to be an opposite reaction to civilization. And yes, what do you think of pandemics are on the four horsemen? They were, they the hubris that the ancients were talking about that these people got involved in. So, yeah, yeah, we, we don't we don't get a one way trip to Homo Deus and Ken Wilber's uh, Godhead and stuff, and it's like immortality. And it's like, read what they said. From Icarus to the Epic of Gilgamesh, they all said if you head down that route, there's an equal and opposite reaction, and you will wind up where you are trying to avoid. No one listened. So it's like, great. Here we go. Yeah, be a fun um, ride. Yeah, Prometheus had a good run, but now he's about to die of a heart attack. <laughs> Yeah, alcoholic poisoning. And the sooner the better. 
yeah so yeah so okay so that so i, I did the sigil i did the, the thing about saying we do manifesto and then we can all debate it um see if you, we all agree um yeah then i made all these other subs so i think what I, I think we should try and set ourselves a target for the youtube channel and for XR Med to try and get to a thousand members. I think that I think that Reddit is faking faking you out. The those the number of members there I think are fiction. Um, I, I don't think they they're really for real. But anyway, I, I think it represents more the kind of activity. But I think they're faking it. But <clears throat> don't you think I, we should change the name? Don't you think we no, should no, change? No, no, the, because, what I'm saying is we should try and get XR Med up to a thousand um, okay. as, a, as a goal and then, then abandon it. So I've, I've already started the Extinction RT sub and then I did another one for um, for uh, the, fl the, the flippening is already taken. There's a user called the flippening and that's by stock flipping. Um, it's, it's one of the <laughs> the uh, one of the apes on <laughs> on GameStop thing. So uh, so you can't apparently make a sub with the user's name. So so uh, so I called it the the gyrate reset. So basically a pun on the great reset because I mean this is the way I think about it. I think this we, we you know uh, we're gonna get the great reset, but a much much better one than plus Schwab's. So although it was a good joke, we use hashtag the, the gyrate reset and the flippening and earth flip and stuff like that. And then, um, yeah, so we put all the earth flip stuff there. Um, we put Extinction Arty stuff in the Extinction Arty sub. Uh, there's, there's one for the Sirius Institute um, and Neocortex Foundation too, uh, which Hank started. But um, uh, the... And uh, yeah, one, one other, yeah, I th thought, oh, one more thing. Yeah, the Elam, Elam Stark thing. So, so Gary didn't like the Elam Stark thing and thought it was kind of a bit too, uh, not a good use of time. Um, so, uh, what do you guys think? Because the, see, I thought, A, I should lighten things up a bit because I put a bit of stress on you earlier in the year and everybody squealed a bit, but I was going to, do a, an easier thing and make it a bit light. Um, I don't know if anybody thought they were funny or maybe not. My, my kids didn't think it was funny. They, they, it's, it's too harsh. The hum <laughs> my humor is a bit too harsh. They said, they said, man, it's kind of funny, but it's like, man, it's dark. <laughs> and so, yeah. But um, I thought I could take that somewhere. It's a lot of work. It's about two or three days work, each one of those things for me. Um, I thought uh, if I carried on doing them, you know, Elon Musk is a kind of cult leader. So I was going to start off taking the piss out of him and then develop the character into, you know, maybe introduce the flipping into that. And, um, and, and you know, but my, my aim is just to take the piss out of um, transhumanists because they, they're not getting enough critique. Every, everybody just goes along with this cult. And it's like, man, you know, the, the you know, the, just the thought of um, of not thinking that Elon Musk is a genius is just unthinkable for. It's just absolutely unconscionable for the for the average dude. Um, you know, so Elon Musk is rapidly getting messiah status, and it's like, I mean, come on, the guy's a fucking snake oil salesman, and he's got he's got the mentality of a twelve year old, and he's thick as pig shit. He's just a grifter, but so I, I'm amazed nobody says it. But I thought I should say it. So, um, yeah, just from the point of view of Team Human and and the trans, against the transhumanists, then I thought uh, it could. I thought I'd see see where it goes. But uh, so then I thought it had the Elon Stark um, sub where I'd just put those cartoons. Maybe make a book out of them eventually when you got enough of them, uh, assemble them. But, but what do people think? Did, did you think that Elon Stark thing, the comic, is crap? Or no, I like them. I, like I love them. it. Funny. They make me laugh. So, but I mean, I like that sort of dark uh, humor. And so, now we'd have to use them in a. 
how in the context of the of your new the new direction with the flippening uh do you want to introduce I'll that there. yeah i'll get there slowly yeah mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Also, depending on if anybody sees them, but I thought it. I think we should start trying to um, popularize the whole thing and try and publish it more. And so I thought that 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 kind of thing would be kind of good sugar coating, a good entry. It's kind of like a trailhead into the yard. Right? <laughs> um, but I, I think I put the sigil and the the QR code on on it, and then people could spread it around. But what what I would like is, is after we go. After we do the manifesto, if we all agree on it, um, then um, then I would uh, ask people to take ownership of things like Facebook and Twitter and stuff, and essentially just repost material to, from make make Reddit maybe the, the real thing that it's in but just take ownership of one of the things, and basically it's. It's pretty much just reposting and, and just getting, but yeah, I think we must think of various ideas to do, like, you know, ask me any things. And um, I, I think one of the things that we should do is um, to get in on the metaverse and try and pull people out of it. So, in other words, try and be disruptive and try and fuck up uh, Zuckerberg's metaverse. Because while they allow you to put any, I, I imagine until they realize that people, how how what shitbags people are is they, they won't censor stuff so for a while you, you'll be able to be pretty subversive and tell people you know you're in the matrix get out there's the flipping's about to happen don't waste your time in here that kind of thing um but yeah the i feel terrible about the, the metaverse is is like first of all it's the, it's the end of zuck he's he, he's gonna He's going to ruin himself too. Um, but the, you know, it'll be popular for a while, and then it'll be the, it'll be a disaster. But I just, from so many angles, I feel bad about that metaverse because it's like, the, uh, it's a shitty way to spend your time in the end times. <laughs> it's a terrible way to spend your time in the end times. It's uh, it's about as low as you can go, and it. Anyway, the only way it's, the metaverse is going to work is if, if uh, because of porn. The only reason why the internet worked, by the way, is because of porn. <laughs> it wasn't going anywhere before it got porn and the dark web. Uh, they, they, they write that bit out of the history books, but that's the truth. And uh, the same with the metaverse. And unless he, uh, he, go, he can't win because unless he goes and makes it a, a porn hub, uh, a virtual porn hub is uh, he he's you know it's it's going to be a fad and nobody likes virtual reality glasses and all this you know I mean you know Google Glass and uh, VR headsets and nobody likes that shit and it's it's a horrible dead world it's not very nice being in those worlds so the idea that people are going to spend their working days in there, it's like crazy shit it's not going to happen and so. You know, it'll it'll have a bit of a fad, and then it'll become either a porn thing. And if he goes down the porn route, he's finished. He's that he his whole thing is based on stock market credibility and stuff. And you know, if he goes to, for porn and stuff, he, he you know, it's basically he's doing a Ponzi scheme. He's doing exactly the same thing as Elon Musk is. It's a Ponzi scheme. He's taking government money subsidies, using the subsidies to pretend that he's the future, and you know with space and electric cars and then going to the stock market and selling it on there, um, taking in suckers. And so, yeah, it's a huge success because there's a lot of money with nowhere to go. But Zuckerberg's in exactly the same position. He needs to show growth. And so he has to, so he'll do all right for a little bit, but then, you know, he's going to really struggle. There's like Africa and China and stuff is not going <laughs> to be in the metaverse. So, He's going to find. He's going to have worse and worse stockholder meetings where he tries to explain how you know how he's desperately going to get the numbers up. But if he goes down the porn route, he's finished. The, the Wall Street doesn't like porn, and so that will be the end of him. So anyway, you're seeing the last days of Zuckerberg. But any, so the, I would say though that we should we should get in on it because it's it would probably be the wild west for a little bit. And so just, you know, eventually they'll start censoring it, like YouTube and all of that. 
Um, but, uh, you know, before, uh, you know, I mean, Zuckerberg's stuck because if he cleans up the pawn and makes it try and PG, it, it will it will fade. Um, and if he goes down the pawn route, he won't uh, be able to do his. So, but in the meantime, uh, and, you know, there's probably a lot of scope for subversion and being scurrilous in, inside the metaverse for our purposes. And so I think we should dive in and, um, and yeah, put scurrilous things about the flipping in there. <laughs> All righty. Yeah, it, it would be like that scene from The Matrix where he's like, buckle up, Dorothy, because Kansas is going bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. No one wants to live in The Matrix, man. It's like, come on. It's like, it's, it's a nightmare. You, you would have to sentence people. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's where Zach can... Maybe that's the... Uh, the cartoons I can do for Elon Stark is that they, you know, Zuckerberg finds that he can make money with, you know, basically with the prison industrial complex where they, they sentence prisoners to the metaverse. <laughs> but, but it's it's straight out of a clockwork or, orange, you know. It's basically you should like the only people in the metaverse will be strapped to a chair with like matchsticks in their eyes being forced to <laughs> forced to interact. <laughs> Unless your company says you you got to get a jab and get in the metaverse. It's like, no one's going to do it, man. Come on. You'll go and have a look. You'll be like, ah, oh, this sucks. You know, that'll be the end of it. But we could use it for a bit. Yeah. So, okay. So that was a few things. Yeah. So that's my plan. That's my plan. Um, if everybody's okay with that, then I will... I'll go go ahead and start writing up the manifest. Yeah, uh, Hugh, I wanted to go over the uh, the, the sigil, the sigil. Um, so you you'd want us to make our own sigil and our like a ritual, our personal, so personalize it for ourselves. Is that? Is that no, right? no. So this is for an investing ceremony. So oh. so investing is, is okay. So when um, it's it's magic uh, with a K. So it's it's Lionel stuff, basically. So when you make a voodoo thing or a sigil or something like that, you have this process of essentially bringing it alive and making a, investing it with psychic energy. So um, the thing is to, to do a ceremony, where an investiture ceremony where you Kind of breathe life into it, like God making Adam out of a clay, <laughs> clay or something like that. Um, so, you know, go and have a look at ceremonies and stuff for investing symbols and stuff. But yeah, we're talking doing a magical ceremony. Um, your local priest would not approve. <laughs> uh, but yeah, does does anybody know how to describe what investing a symbol? is um, um i have i do something like that in my life on halloween i have a wolf shrine that i light incense to and i beat a drum for a little bit and then i meditate and it's hard to explain like i sort of astral project myself as a wolf for a while and then i come back so it's sort of like you know like sort of like quick Quake's little wooden idol except you know i use it to like meditate and you know it's like to my totem animal and stuff, if that makes any sense. I wonder if that's what you sort of mean or. Yeah, that's exactly. I mean, like, like do a magic circle with an, an enneagram of candles and dance backwards three times saying some mumbo jumbo and then sacrifice a goat and then, uh, then that kind of thing. Yeah, you could look up um, the sort of pagan um ceremonies and uh yeah sacrifices yeah yeah exactly yeah i listened to an interview with a guy a bit like what um divine beast was saying yeah and he does a similar thing he is actually a modern day pagan and he had different um amulets and um uh 
yeah, God, like statues of things that he prays to, you know, various um, pagan deities. I don't know what they're called. <clears throat> yeah, so go and ask Lionel what's, uh, what it, if you want. But it's basically some ceremony to uh, aliven this. It's, it's basically you summon the, so this, okay. The symbol, oh, shit. Okay. Gonna have to go, yeah. The symbol actually conjures forth some kind of a demon, right? So it actually represents some force in another plane or another dimension or something like that. By um, so you you summon <laughs> the force behind it <laughs> uh, in a kind of magic ritual. Um, so don't you know? You don't be surprised if you get a bit gaslit. Weird shit can happen. Um, but anyway, just take it as a lot of fun. Um, but uh, yeah, so I wouldn't prescribe something. I wouldn't say, uh, let's all do this or do something together. I think it's a lot more fun if 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 you go and think about it, if you go and look at other things, try and figure out, you know, the more time you invest in this, the better. So if you think about it a lot, you, you go and do some research, you, you go and see what the meaning of it is, what you think. The whole thing is is about, and then if you make a connection, that's golden. If you kind of suddenly find, hey, this reminds me of something in my childhood. This reminds me of, you know, there's some aspect of some religious thing that you already have. Anything that has meaning to you, say, wow, it's it's something. It's this. It's it's that thing my mother wore around her neck or something. And you just say suddenly that would be it. That would be the connection then you develop that into some kind of ceremony. And um, it could be as simple as anything. Um, I, I already have something in mind. I mean, I, 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 I'm I, going to do something really boring and just uh, make a sacrifice to Poseidon because that's what sailors do. So you make a libation and a sacrifice to Poseidon. So that's... Can I give a, an example of the research thing? So a while back, I had a dream about like it was the silver serpent coiling around this phoenix and so i hit for like a few weeks i hit google trying to figure out what the heck that symbolized and i found these greek gods fannies and nyx and i'm like that has to be them that has to be them the serpent is nyx she's not some like crow it has to be because <laughs> you know the serpent sometimes is feminine and it re represents change so it totally makes sense that like something like that like shapes light like space shapes light so it's like it's, my mind was blown after that. Yeah, I'll admit something to you guys. I I have this uh, little thing with um, uh, POTUS. So um, so Pontus, not Pontus. POTUS is the president of the United States, which I also have a thing with. Maybe that maybe that's the reason. Uh, um, Pontus is is a very very ancient sea god, the most ancient, and there's very little evidence, but it's it's i mean pontus is older than greece and it, um pontus has always kind of has haunted me <laughs> the very first time i saw pontus was in a in a roman mosaic in italy and um yeah that's pontus follows me around i have a strange relationship with pontus, but pontus is the god of the sea became poseidon um so yeah I, me and Pontus, sort of pals. <laughs> oh, that's anyway, so cool. <laughs> when, when I die, I, I, I'm going to be looking Pontus in the face, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Pontus is going to be coming. But, yeah, that's a bit of personal revelation for you. I, I think it's a good idea to use also... Um, our dream materials because we're bringing in something very deep into these sort of things as you said and I mean I know I'm having a wealth of dreams with fantastic creatures and I mean I'm a I'm in a I'm in a super cinema at night now <laughs> it's just I don't want to wake up because there's so much and I I'm going to dig into into this fantastic kind of uh, images and and creatures that are that I'm seeing definitely I think it's very the dream yeah, we must bring our dreams because we are establishing an egregore here. We, we're kind of connected in a funny way now after 
after two years. And I'm sure we're going to find some very interesting things emerging from all this. Is that, that's so cool. Yeah. yeah, I would recommend, you know, make it out of modeling clay, you know, carve it out of wood if that's your thing or draw it yourself and, you know, leave it under your pillow at night, see what you dream about, hang it on your dream catcher over your bed. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, put it in your pocket as a lucky charm, and just just see see what happens. See, you you want the thing to talk to you. It'll tell you. Um, but yeah, and the, the solstice, I think, twenty first of December. Cool. Um, just think up something. Yeah, look, you, you don't have to go mad. Uh, you can just just do do some shit. Just put it on video, and then just. You know, we'll post it. Po yeah. We'll post it the day after on uh, on Reddit or something, whatever. Post a video for what you did. But I think it'll be nice. I think I think it'll be a nice thing to do. Oh, you know, I thought of another thing that'd probably be good for me to do. I could probably see if I can get the symbol big enough for me to like sit on as like a mandala during my meditation. Yeah. yeah, draw it and chalk on the draw it and chalk on the ground. You see what it is a mandala, by the way. So it's not oh, a very complicated shit. mandala, but it's you can draw it. You see, the Hindus would draw it on the ground and then meditate on it. But <laughs> yeah, I was going to say something that I'm going to regret. No, I don't know if I should say this. So if you, were tantric, if you if you were tantric. Uh, you would get this, you would go and put the symbol on it. You'd go to a graveyard, you'd put it on a grave, <laughs> and then you would meditate. With it. <laughs> but that's the tantric. We also just, um, just after full moon, and um, the next one will be just two days before the solstice. So I just, because we're talking about tides and tidal things and all that, we're going to be on a, on a nice time for doing these sort of things. I, ca I caught a glimpse of something that the, this a lunar eclipse. Uh, so the lunar eclipses, I think, continue all through now and for, for weeks. But the, apparently, there's the, the longest lunar eclipse ever. So it's it's kind of special, too. Um, uh, so yeah, I think that's an ongoing thing. Um, but yeah, it's it's a special time. Uh, well, after after the meeting that I listened to this morning, when you were describing, and I, I it will hopefully be on be posted soon on the sub, but you know, uh, paying attention to <laughs> to natural events and to eh, clouds, sea, uh, sun, uh, it's becoming very important now. I mean, so it's not it's always been important. It's just that our attention has been diverted from these these signs and. And this is a great time also to encourage this through the, the new direction we're taking, like to, to divert our attention away from the metaverse back to the universe, you know. <laughs> yes, so so that the death part of it is is also uh, transformation and rebirth. So the wheel is also part of transformation. You can I you can see that wheel, that that the, the circle or the cross. It's actually a solar disc, it's um it's the spinning wheel. So Venus de Milo, by the way, is her arms are missing, but she's almost definitely spinning and she's all over the ancient world. The very first artifacts that they find is um, spinning wheels, you know, basically bobbins for the women use for spinning. And the reason is because they thought that um, uh, Sibylle Carly was spinning the world, spinning the sky. So they thought of her spinning like a woman spinning, spinning thread. You know. um, oh, weaving the threads of fate, weaving the threads of weaving fate, the, right? threads of fate. Yeah, the exactly. red threads of fate. Ah, oh. <laughs> yeah. exactly. So, so that wheel is. You will see that wheel on those spinning wheels. You can see them in Greek museums. The Antikythera mechanism has has that. You can see it on the Mithraeum in the Mithraeum on the reliefs. You can see it. Uh, we we just made a tiny modification in in essence just superimposed it on a swastika but um probably don't want to be too public about that but the um hopefully it's subtle enough 
but the um yeah the it's a it's a solar wheel so um those things are sig runes and they they're everywhere they're fucking everywhere i mean the the keystone in greece is um you know the famous keystone symbol is it's 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 a swastika and uh, it's just fucking you can't get away from it but anyway you should uh, go into all of these things go into the phoenician tap and um, yeah until until it basically looks meaningful <laughs> and then go and express that so uh, you know kind of solidify that in, in in some kind of communion and ceremony with it um and and look up the date the solstice because uh, there might be all sorts of interesting convergences on on this year's solstice Yeah, but uh, as for a turning point, yes. <laughs> this December 21st is as good as it. Well, it's just like, I think it was last year around December 21st, there was that Saturn and Jupiter conjunction, right? Where yeah, Kronos, I didn't Kronos look up fighting... it. Yeah, I, I know that 2020 was a big deal. I don't, don't I saw know that. It. Yeah. yeah. 2020 so yeah i'm not sure what's i haven't looked up what's what's big in the sky um on that but it it must be symbolic i'm pretty sure there's some some shit going on Computer. yeah it was uh <laughs> it was uh saturn and jupiter so it's just like the battle between Kronos and zeus yep Uranus is the one to watch. Yeah, I wonder if Uranus, Uranus is, is involved in this. Anyway, uh, lot, lots of exciting homework. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that covered everything I wanted to say. If I, I can't think of something, I'll remember for next, next time. But, um, yeah, I'll, I'll do another cartoon and then I'll get started on the manifesto. Let's try and get it out as soon as possible so we can start talking about it. Oh, is it possible? Can we post like examples of uh, ceremonies like, on XR Med if you don't like? Yeah, like, yeah. Do you want to? Yeah, I did. the only thing I'm, I would, I would, the only thing I think is nice ideas is um, to make it personal. So right. if people, so you don't want to make people think. A overawe them or or make make them think you know or, but it's it's good to discuss things that you find would be nice. But I w I would say keep what you're going to do secret in case you you screw up somebody else, make them self conscious about what they're going to do. So I'd say we all keep it secret. We but but refer it to Lionel. If if Lionel comes out, Lionel might come, come up with some really interesting stuff, and then I would share that. Yeah. But anything you find about the date or the sigil or something, yeah, put it, put that up. Is yeah, Lionel okay? Is Lionel okay to get to get uh, private emails from us like that? W would he be Would he be open to that? Or have you, have you told him? I, I never asked. I never asked. But I, I just, I um, yeah. I mean, I'm. He might. He it's, might. It's only an email. <laughs> if we no, don't I, tell I him. Probably, you probably have he knows that we're doing the symbol and you just tell him so he's he's seen the symbol and he likes it so if you if i just just say you're a member of the extinctionati and you um you know you want help with your plan for investing it and tell him we're doing it on the solstice and then yeah that should be enough it's the mouse mouse that spins so if on the mailing list it's the mouse that spins but if if you if you want us mailing his email, I'm, I'm sure he wouldn't mind me giving you his email to ask. So if you if you want it, I'll I'll give it to you. Ask anybody that can see the mouse that spins on the extinction ID mailing list. Sounds good. I'll, uh, yeah, I want to invest some time into it. Yeah, make it make it good for for myself. Meditate on it. Try and try and try and see it in the phosphines in front of your eyes. What Divine Beast said about actually doing it as a mandala, just drawing it on the ground and 
sitting in that lotus position. And <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it, it's like it, if you draw it, it's sort of like doing a Nordic rune. It's like casting a spell. Um, yeah, I don't usually talk about this stuff because people think I'm fucking nuts. But yeah, I really do think that stuff works. I do it. <laughs> you can cast spells. Yeah. In in terms of runes, um, the arms I can they work. <laughs> in terms of runes, the the arms on that um, on on the sigil, they they actually the the thorn rune. So you might want to look up that too. All right. Well, plenty, <laughs> plenty, plenty of nice, lovely, juicy shit, hey? Yeah. Um, I could probably show you guys the sketch of Fonny's and Nick's I'm doing really quick before we go, if you want. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, see how do I do this? Uh, okay, there we go. All right, can you see it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's faint. It's still very early, early days, but yeah. Uh, she'll have wings too, but I haven't drawn those yet. Wings are kind of hard to draw. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's cool. Yeah. It's like a Cyrus. I mean Horus, Horus. Yeah, nice, nice. Uh, so yeah, we should Yeah, we should also think about monetizing all of this which make um you know um what are those Fungible tokens or something, blockchain tokens. <laughs> Maybe I could do the comic stuff and, and make. What are those tokens called? You know, those. those tokens. Oh, do you mean um, the the images? Oh yeah, yeah. Like um, oh fucking hell, I can't, it's gone from my mind as well. What is it? Um, damn it. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, all the artwork that's becoming, yeah, that's gone into a huge bubble. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you, you, can, can, <laughs> you can make, make uh, uh, pretty, pretty good, good money, money off of art. We, 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 we should. Huh? In fact, I, I would like to try a whole lot of things, like um, maybe doing a, a GoFundMe to try and. Um, do geoengineering with a Greenland ice sheet to sprinkle, you know, soot on it and try get it to melt to accelerate the flipping. <laughs> well, that's, that's what makes, makes people pretty excited. <laughs> NFT. That was it. NFT. Non-fungible tokens. I'd say that's more of a realistic thing than the getting involved in that metaverse shit. <laughs> I, mean, no, I, no, I, I just want to be anarchic and disruptive in the, in the metaverse. Just oh yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. So, so, shut up. Up. I guess it's so early days in the metaverse. I just kind of think, how much is actually going to be going on there initially? Is it worth it? You know, but I mean, I'm, I have no idea. You could well be right. Oh, no, I think people will crowd in the, at first. They're not going to stay long, and I don't think it has staying power. But it, it should, you know, everybody's going to go in there just to have a look at some stage, and so you can put some scurrilous shit in. I'm sure. Did you try to put some of your cartoons on some of the subs? Like our transhumanism, or do you know those kind of weird places where those guys uh, worship Elon Musk? No, I just put. I just thought it would be funny to stick it on the Elon Musk sub. I put it on there. I got in lifetime Insta ban in about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I, I mean, if you need me. proof of Colts, there you go. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I told him he was bugged just because I said Elon Musk is an idiot. He was like, whoa, my God. This guy's a therapist. Sophie knows who he is. <laughs> blasphemy, <laughs> blasphemy, blasphemy, blasphemy. <laughs> Infamy, infamy. Everybody's got an infamy. Well, yeah, I was just, I was just floored how you know a, a guy in his sixties can you know, be so childish. Well, yeah. you know, swaddled billionaire that probably never had to struggle for anything in his life. <laughs> you don't really. Oh no, mature. this guy struggled. No, no, this oh, guy struggled. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, this guy struggled. What? Wait, yeah, the the thing that touched him off was he's he's very funny about money and he gets all his self esteem from money, and so I what you know he, the thing I think it came up with I said like no he's an idiot and he said like how can he be an idiot he's a billionaire and I said like what you don't honestly think there's some correlation between how much money you've got and how how smart you are and that's what ticked him off. Because he, he's obviously his whole life he's been based on the fact that you know he's been trying to prove how smart he is. He, he's obviously got insecurities about how smart he is, and he's been spending his life trying to prove to the rest of the world that he's not dumb by how much money he's got. So by by you know by extension, Elon Musk has you know a billion for every IQ point. So he's, you know, you know must have a, have a 300, 300 IQ. <laughs> so, but but anyway, Sophia, do you think that my analysis is right? I, know. I think so. I think so. For the little I know about him, but yeah, I think so. I think it's right. Oh, it's but I think, I think you should try to post some of those uh, drawings on, on subs that are less uh, worshipping than Elon Musk one, but, you know, just just to try to, to create a little disturbance, you know, and you might, it might be bad, you might be banned or it might be erased, but it can, some people, it might just, I don't know, because some people don't question this guy. Some well, people don't, you know. Well, what part I of the reason is, oh, I was just about to say like, you know, billionaires are like the modern pharaohs, you know, that's how people kind of see them. So it it's hard to expose their humanity in a way. It's like, no, oh, they're just people like us. They're just really rich. <laughs> they're just, no, they're you know, more than pharaohs. They're messiahs. They, they, they're becoming, you know, as their people's eco anxiety and the, the doomerism extends, is they looking for Elon Musk to, you know, save us, to take us to Mars and stuff. It's getting really creepy. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, no, it's, uh, it's serious. Uh, Anything, anything that has an interest in Elon Musk, you're going to get a ban if you put put things up there because I I can't find anybody that's disillusioned with these guys. I mean, like Russell Brand, maybe those that kind of crowd. But then there are not many people that are you know these guys don't get any criticism in our culture. You don't criticize billionaires. Email one of them to to Russell Brand. You never know. Just throw it out to him. See, it's copyrighted, so. <laughs> yeah, I don't think. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. For, Images are powerful. Faulty you knows know. Russell Brand, actually, I think. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. We should write thing now. And so, all right. Well, if that's enough, then we should round it off. All right. So, yeah, let's pause still. Damn, I can see the sigil already in the fast <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> ah, there you go. Wow. All right, then. So, yeah. Meditate on that and see uh, 
see what comes up. Whatever comes up, put it aside and carry on meditating. Um, just keep keep on seeing what, what comes up. Don't get fixated on any one thing. Just let the passing parade go. And think of it kind of like a cornucopia of of mystic strange phenomena and a kind of a portal into a whole new world of things you've never dreamed existed. You're suddenly opening up that portal and getting into contact with who knows what. Embrace it. Don't get too gaslit. There we go. Yes. Well, have a very flipping week. And I'll see you next week if, uh, if the world is not upside down or the right way up. I think the world's upside down now. So it's All right. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank thank you. you. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Take care during the week. Yep, take care. Tie yourselves to the mast. Okay, then. See you, everybody. See you.